Silicon Valley. Technology, art, green, and sustainability. Welcome to another episode of SV Tag Silicon Valley Tech Art Green and Sustainability. Today I have another great guest with me, Sky Nelson, who I've known for quite a while and we've been trying to get you on the show and there was a hiccup, we postponed and then COVID happened, and we postponed again. A long time. So you're finally here and I'm just so grateful. You're an author, a physicist, a musician, you're a dad, like what don't you do? <laughs> right? <laughs> this is a lot. Um, yeah, so yeah. tell Tell love us all those things. Yeah, tell us about yourself and tell us, you know, your history and how you got into all this. I mean, incredible background, yeah. So I was born in the Bay Area, out in Point Reyes, Point Reyes Station, and actually on the only part of North America that's moving north on the Pacific Plate, out on the point, and um, the rest of the continent in the U.S. is moving south on the North American Plate. And I, I went out to Berkeley for college and then San Francisco State for graduate school and studied physics when I got to college and then loved what I learned in the classroom. Fell in love with some of the things we'll talk about today, like the Fourier transform and fractals and holograms. And I was also a musician from the age of five onwards. So, Were you um, into Star Trek or any of that when you were a kid? I was very into Star Wars and Star Lord Wars. of the Rings. My favorite book, Lord of the Rings. Okay. So, so I think the I'm, hologram thing, I'm thinking, <laughs> right, Star well, right. Trek. Keep and me up, Scotty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they had really cool technology on that show. So, and did you go to, where did you go to school for phys being a physicist? Well, I went, I, I got my bachelor's at Berkeley. Mm, okay. In Berkeley. And then I took about 15 years and uh, had a number of jobs. I was a teacher. I actually got a Sonoma State teaching credential in physics and taught in a classroom for many years. And then I uh, w went to play music full time for a few years. And then I was in a, in a tech job in a software company for about seven years. Tech and physicist. Yeah. Interesting. And, and I was able to move from that into going back to grad school. And I commuted from Santa Rosa down to San Francisco for San Francisco State University. And we met, um, well, I can't remember if we met at Center for Spiritual Living or did you ever work with um, Eucalyptus Magazine? I think I. No, but we did meet at uh, CSL okay. San Jose. Okay. And I think we met I, somewhere else too, but I, I can't remember off the. But we, we, well, fish, we officially right? met when you were doing a workshop there. Okay, and right. um, and you, I guess you do a lot of workshops. Um, but let's pull up the first slide here. So you have some books out. And this is Leap to Wholeness. And this is your, this is your second book? Yeah. Okay. And we can pull that down. I'm going to hold up both of the books here that you have. So you've got the first one that we just had the jacket for and then this one. And so you're also an author, and this is pretty amazing. This, uh, this is the one that you were doing a workshop for when we met. Well, it's, one, it's really one workshop that I do now. It's, okay. It's a co continuation of material that I've developed. And I went from, I loved teaching high school classroom. I love that. But um, I wanted to teach also my own original research. And when I graduated from San Francisco State, I went into research and, and published a paper just this past December. And that was your master's? That was my master's. Master's in physics. In physics, Ph yeah. And then I got funding to continue for two years doing independent research and published a paper on um, wholeness and quantum mechanics, quantum foundations is what, is what it's called. The foundations of what is quantum mechanics about. And that work also was in parallel with the development of these two books about synchronicity, understanding how events in life can be connected even though they don't seem like they have a connection and how we can use that knowledge uh, to make choices in our life that are more empowering. Right, yep. And then Living in the Flow is a sequel to that? Or? Well, Living in Flow came first and I, was, I submitted oh. this manuscript on synchronicity and it, it didn't get accepted, it was close. But I realized when I was able to resubmit it uh, about six months later to the same people, I decided I'm not gonna resubmit the same manuscript. I'm gonna start from scratch. And I realized at that point, I asked myself, why do I care about this material? Like, so synchronicities, you know, you, you run into somebody at an unexpected place in time. It's nice, you have a good conversation, but does it really change your life? And I realized that, yes, that's the reason I'm writing this is because it does change your life. When you run into somebody and it's the right person to talk to about your business or that someone you, you end up being in a relationship with or end up having a job working for their, their family or whatever it might be, that these are instances where you get into flow. And I had a lot of experiences in music especially where I would have an unexpected opportunity to play music like in an airport. There's a piano sitting there 
and I've got 20 minutes and living flight, in the flow and I'm just living in flow yeah and you know taking advantage of that opportunity gets you into flow so there's this intimate connection between synchronicity which is an opportunity presented to you and flow which is what happens when you say yes to the right. opportunity so um, the living in the flow is part of the CSL thing right and sometimes it's hard to do that. Some, somebody does something that's disappointing and it's hard not to get caught up in that he your head. And, and honestly, I'm gonna just say it out loud, to be a real bitch about something. You have to choose not to be a real bitch about something when something happens. And other people are saying, oh, this should happen. This you have to just choose to live in the flow, go with it, and you know, do the right thing. And, and you know, sometimes that's hard for people. Um, you, I think the world. You hear, and, and I'm going to just say this real quick. You hear about these incidences with car accidents lately. Like recently, yeah. there was someone that got in a car accident, and the woman took off and called her boyfriend or whatever, and they came and beat somebody up because she got in a car accident. Not living in the flow, right? <laughs> I mean, usually you just call your insurance. There's obviously something wrong there. Right. You know, maybe she had a warrant or something. Um, you know. Instead of calling your insurance and just dealing with that's why you have insurance, that happened. And, you know, people can get so upset over things. And instead of just taking a minute and pausing and saying, okay, it's not the end of the world, yeah. just live in the flow. Well, I think what happens is we are put in situations. And I think this is the way the world is programmed to operate. That's my thesis. And we're put in situations which challenge us and take us to our underlying core. Right. Like what's going on inside of ourselves that we're right. not And you don't aware know what of. else is going on with that person. Maybe they right. just lost a kid or just right. came from a hospital and or maybe they're going to someone, you know, they don't know, you don't know what's going on with that person. So we're, we're being put in these situations and what we're being asked to do is be more aware of ourselves, more self-conscious, self-aware, yeah. so that we, we, we can give people the benefit of the doubt, we can give ourselves the benefit of the doubt, have more self-compassion. And my, my thesis is that these, are, these synchronicities are precisely that, opportunities to grow and heal our own wounds and of course we do that in, in tandem with other people, so sometimes that means other people get hurt in the process. But the more we can open our hearts, we, we get fooled less and less by the situations which trigger us. Let's um, pull up slide two, and uh, living in the flow again is, that's part of this book, correct? Yeah. So tell us about this um, diagram, picture, graphic. So this tree idea is, illustrates how my model of how synchronicity works. So you're traveling along this journey and there's this tree ahead of you and you're climbing this tree and the apples represent those branches, those outcomes of the situation where a certain experience happens. So what we're focused on is your qualitative inner, inner world, like what you want to experience in life. Not whether you want that car or that house, but what you want to feel like. And that those are the apples that you're, you're, you're targeting. And the weight of those apples makes the branches more or less likely. And so the synchronicity is an event which happens, which seems random in the moment, because you're, you're here on the tree, but then it's related to those apples that are, that are calling you forward and weighing down the branches for you. And you see, only later do you see that there's a connection between meeting this person here and getting that synchronicity later. Should I, should I tell a story of synchronicity? Sure, yeah, yeah, and um, leap to wholeness. We'll go, we'll go there in a second. Great. Yeah. So I, when I was at grad school at San Francisco State, I was an older student, and I had a daughter who was 10 years old or eight years old at the time. And Wait, how many children do you have? One. Okay. One daughter. And she's like 12 now? She's 12 now. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so that was a few years ago. And uh, I'm like, you have 10 daughters. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a lot. There was, uh, there was a camping trip that was going to happen to go to an observatory and look at the stars, which sounds amazing, right? But I, I commuted two and, half, <laughs> two and a half hours to school by bus, so I thought to myself, there's no way I'm going to like commute to school and then get in a car and go to a campsite and be away from my family for a whole weekend. So I just didn't even ask about the trip. And time goes by, and it's the weekend before the trip, and somebody finally asked me, so are you going on this trip? And I said, no, I can't make it. It's just too far for me. But I, maybe I should ask, where is it? <laughs> and they said, well, it's at Sugarloaf Ridge State Park. And I thought, you mean the one in Kenwood, which is right next to Santa Rosa, which is 10 minutes from my house? <laughs> so if I'd never asked, I never would have realized that they were actually getting in the car, braving traffic to come to me, and then I, it was very easy for me to join this field trip. And that's, that's how synchronicity works. Like we get given opportunities. And you for, took your daughter. I did take my daughter. And in fact, that's the rest of the story. It turns out that she had a birthday party the next day. So I was worried, okay, there's another obstacle. We're never gonna make it to the birthday party. Well, where was the birthday party? It was at Sugarloaf Ridge Campground. So it, these things were at the same location, a day apart from each other. We just camped over the night and walked down to the party the next day. So if you don't look carefully, you don't find ways to see these opportunities showing up in your life, you might say no or have a closed mind 
And the more we can notice them coming up, we can open our minds and take advantage of them. So the, the leap to wholeness, which is the, this is the second one? Yeah. yeah. So the leap to wholeness, how did, you know, how did this come about, the next one? Well, so the, 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 in the first book, I have this process called the Lorax, which is to, uh, I guess we'll get to that in a minute. We'll get, so yeah. I'll, bring, I'll bring that up. And that's how we notice synchronicities. And then the question is, how do synchronicities happen? Well, when you look at space and time themselves, I actually have this theory that if you understand space and time really as they are, then it might actually open our hearts more and give us more compassion for each other. Why is that? Well, because space and time, the way we think of them, space is how we divide up property, essentially, right? Here's my space and your space, my house and your house. And time is how we divide up our hours into what we get paid for, what's right. free time, what's family time. And, and as we get older, <laughs> the money thing is less of a concern, but spending more time with people who may not be here for very long. Yeah, right. And, and money is, is another thing of dividing up mine and yours. So space and time are not actually thought of this way in, in science at the fundamental level. If you look at the path of a particle through an experiment, the measurement you make at the end point determines what happened in the middle. So there's this, you need to look at the whole system to understand the, pro, the, the system. And sometimes when you're in it, it's hard to look at the whole picture, right? Absolutely. The whole big picture. And so a synchronicity is what happens in the moment, which you can't tell exactly what it's connected to, but it's only later that you realize that there's some important outcome that's a result. Let's pull up slide three, which I'm not sure if this is the one you were talking about. Yes. Yeah, this is okay. it. So the Lorax cycle is just a simple way to notice uh, more of these synchronicities in your life. First of all, listen to the situation. Notice what's happening around you. And then open your mind. This is what I did when I finally asked, where is the camping trip going to be? And sometimes we come with a closed mind. And so when you open your mind, then you have time to reflect and ask yourself, what other synchronicities are happening that are like giving me some more information here? And then releasing is, is this important aspect of, you know, sometimes we, we suddenly realize we have to let go of what we thought we were going to be doing that weekend in order to go on the camping trip. And then from that place, you can take an action. And it's more likely to be in alignment with the situation and catch the synchronicity, because you've done this kind of listening cycle, listening, opening, reflecting, and releasing. And don't give up. And, and then at the end, you don't give up. You just keep on the cycle, keep listening to life. So how does music play a role in this? And I know that's a big part of what you do. And it's funny, because you see a lot of mathematicians or physicists, they also have the music side. And tell us how this relates to what you do and how it's important to you. Well, music, I, I was actually a music major at Berkeley before I switched to physics. Interesting. And, I, and I what do you, music do you I was five. play? Or? I played piano. I, okay. I played classical and jazz and blues. And then I, I started writing songs in, college, in high school. Um, I got my first recording device in high school and recorded my first album. And uh, I've got 11 albums now. Wow. Only a few of them are available on the website. But, okay. Um, a, lot of, a lot of material in the garage. <laughs> and you know, music still is just a huge part of how I express myself. It's also a way to um, affect people. Like I notice music really has an impact on me and on other people. So I see my music as a vehicle for And for the live music thing, I think we've all really missed, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I've seen how people light up when they hear live music or, or original music. And it's also a way that I practice synchronicity because playing music is a way to get into flow and you can't predict how it's gonna go. You can't predict how that relationship's gonna be with another musician or an audience and so it is, it is always a challenge to open, to, to listen, open, reflect, release, and act, and not give up as the process of getting into the relationship of the moment. And what flow is so beautiful for is, is making us be in the relationship of the moment. In normal times, do you play like a regular schedule? Do you play like Sundays at a coffee house or not so regular? Um, well, I, the Center for Spiritual Living and Unity New Thought Communities have been great for me because they've given a place where I can play music on a regular basis. Which is actually where I think I met you first. You played and then you did the workshop. Yeah. And I didn't, went into the workshop for a couple of minutes because I had something else going on, but yeah. Yeah, well, it's, it's a nice community because I can do both. Yeah. And the music that I write is always m meaningful, like in a sense of like trying to lift you up your spirits or, you know, express a lesson that I've learned in life. It's called posi music, positive music. There's actually a genre for it. And um, so I play on uh, Sunday mornings quite frequently for the Centers for Spiritual Living and Unity. So CSL and Unity? Unity. Which is also San Jose? Uh, well, there's, uh, there's Unity Santa Rosa, Unity of Citrus Heights in Sacramento. And then there's all around the country. I play one in Baltimore, Maryland, uh, just on Zoom, of course. Okay. <laughs> um, but actually the pandemic has been wonderful for that because I've been uh, spreading out geographically 
via Zoom. Zoom. Via Zoom. Yeah. Let's pull up slides four and five. So here you are. And are you teaching or are you singing? <laughs> I'm teaching. Okay. This is my community in Point Reyes when I did okay. uh, for the release of Living in Flow. I, I grew up in Point Reyes, which is a small town. And so I was able to reach out to a lot of people that I knew and, um, and get to talk about my work and the release of my book, which is very gratifying to people I knew. And let's pull up the next one, which I think also is you speaking. Oh, no, nope. you're doing some book tours here? So this was the same tour, but I went to Indianapolis. Okay. We have friends there, and we sort of built a tour around the trip to Indianapolis. Nice. This is in a bookstore there, which was... Um, it, it was, was this pre-pandemic? This is pre-pandemic, yeah. Okay. This is in 2019. And is that opening, spring. we can pull that down, is it opening back up for doing book tours? and? Well, it's actually a, a story of synchronicity for how... I, I launched the second book, Leap to Wholeness. Should I tell that synchronicity? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So it was February of this past year, and we were releasing the book in March, and I knew that we weren't going to be able to do live events, which was a bummer, because that was a really gratifying thing. And somebody mentioned this thing called Clubhouse, which is an online forum. Right. Social media. I've been invited to it, but haven't, yeah. So I was like, um, okay, whatever. I sort of blew off my mind. But then I thought more about it. I, I listened, I opened, I reflected. And it kept coming up, and I, I finally checked into it, and I realized it was a great forum for audio only. Started in London, or was it? It's it's East that's, Coast? oh, it starts in the in the South Bay. It here, started here, Silicon okay. Valley, yeah, because okay. it's a tech company. Okay. And um, now it's global. I mean, there's millions and millions of people on it, but it's a forum for lectures essentially, but that are that are um, collective and they're they're democratic, so everyone's joining in. So it became a, a wonderful teaching forum for me, and now I've got like 5,000 followers, and it's become where I go four or five times a week to nice. teach lessons on synchronicity and nice. flow and wholeness. So instead of going in person, you've got this online yeah. forum. And yeah, and it's allowed me to be international in ways that I really had wanted to be. So biggest challenges and um, then the opportunities that came out of it were accolades. And this sounds like one of them right here. Well, I would say, you know, the challenge that comes to mind the most is, um, which, which is what my books are about, is self-confidence. That, you know, in my second book, I tell the story of how my life kind of fell apart in my 20s and how I recovered from that experience and felt overwhelmed by life. And, um, and I think a lot of people can relate to this, especially in the past couple of years. And even though I have a lot of, as you mentioned, I do a lot of things and people think I do a lot of things well and they, they don't realize that I also struggle with self-confidence. And it's been a real challenge to change the self-talk in my head. And that's what my books are really about, like that self-talk that gets in there and, and tells us what we should be doing. When you, when you limit that self-talk and you quiet it down, you start to notice the synchronicities in your life more. These are opportunities. Focus on the positive and not any negative self-talk or yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. not serving you well. Notice where your heart is focused. If your heart is focused on what you're in pain about, mm -hmm. what you're frustrated by, that's really easy. But ultimately the, the work, the challenge is to pull away from that and focus on where you want to be. So um, the next question was about technology and what's something that's really helped you. And obviously the clubhouse, is there something else too? Well, my work is really, my second book, Leap to Wholeness, is about the physics of space and time. This one? Yeah. <laughs> Again. And it's about the wholeness of space and time. And the, the way I demonstrate that is using a Fourier transform, which is the also, so my paper that was published in December is called Space Time Paths as a Whole in the journal Quantum Reports. And it's, it's showing that you, when you talk about light traveling through space and time, you have to look at it as a whole, not in little chunks or slices. So you can't always break things up into separate parts. You have to look at the whole wholeness of it. We're going to bring that slide up right now, too, which I think is, relates to this. So here you have uh, an illustration of the Fourier transform. And on the left, you have just a territory, like some picture of the city. This could be a real 3D city. And then on the right, you have the Fourier transform of it, which is just an encoded data version of it, breaking it down into waves. And then in the next slide, uh, we, what we do... I, I think that's it on that one. That's it on that. Yeah. Okay. okay, so what happens is what you can do is you can remove a portion of the, the, the map on the right, a portion of that data, and you can affect the entire territory as a whole. There's this holistic change that is made. So if you've ever worked with Adobe Photoshop, for Let's instance, that down. You can, you'll know as a graphic designer, you can, when you apply, apply a filter, you apply it in that encoded realm on the right, the, the map or the frequency sp domain. And then it affects the entire picture on the left, which would be like you can find all the edges all at once. 
just by I doing just this one change. I just took a whole week of the Adobe Max um, Premiere and Illustrator and Photoshop, mm -hmm. and it was really fun. Um, and if people want to learn more about that, then go to your website or go to one of your workshops. Yeah. 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 So the workshop is called Wholeness, Synchronicity, and Flow Workshop. Um, is there anything I'm going to pull up? I think this is this may be our second to last slide. Is there anything that the community can help you with? And I just put these two in here because the right is kind right. of the CSL symbol, and then we usually have the the Earth thing there, but then there's a hand drawn one. We pull that down. So is there I something that. that you're looking for from the community? Um, you know, do you need funding? We can't talk about how much. Do you need more places to speak? What you know? free coffee at Starbucks for, you know, if you have an event there. Like what's, what are you looking for from the community? Well, I'm working with an organization that I was brought into called the um, Refugee Film School. And what they're doing is, uh, I'm a mentor for two refugees from Afghanistan that are living in Malaysia. And they're learning skills on computers and how to edit film so that they can be useful on Fiverr or other pro programs to, to make money for their families. And um, so this is an organization that was started by a wonderful group of people in, in the United States that I just got brought into as a mentor. But they're looking for getting computers for these kids and, and things like that. So you can go so to So it's for children films. or all refugees? Uh, children okay. in this case. I have a very good friend that's from Afghanistan originally and we could talk after, connect you with her. Great, wonderful. Yeah, they're, they're at refugeefilmschool.com. Okay, um, any other needs too? Well, I, I, I do my talks and workshops and lectures and, and training uh, at a variety of places, including um, spiritual centers and organizations and um, corporations. And you're a great musician again. I'm a musician <laughs> as well. Often I incorporate a little bit of music to lighten the mood when the time is right. So I'm going to skip ahead to the last slide, and that question is about your music and if you can expand on that, because I want to make sure we get to that before the end of the show. Here's two of your... 11 albums, is that what you said? Uh -huh. um, so this is pretty cool. Um, I didn't realize it was, I knew you were prolific in the music, I didn't realize that much. <laughs> Tell us, and um, we can pull that down, and those are all the places, Spotify, Pan Pandora, Apple, all the places you can get your music. Um, tell us more about your music a little bit. Well, I, I've always written music that is, speaks from the heart, and um, this last album, Stand For Me, was we did a fundraiser for an organization called Rain. Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network, and we tried to raise money for, this is in the beginning of the, of the pandemic, when uh, people were really in situations that they were, they were stuck at home and often in unsafe situations. There was a lot of domestic violence going on, violence. more so, and less help, less help because the people that were running the hotlines were actually able to go out and help weren't able to do that. And the community was isolated from, everyone was isolated from each other. And that's really the, the outcome of my book is, of my research and teaching is that when we look at the world differently, when we understand the space and time and the world we live in in a new way, we realize we're not isolated in the same way. And, and that, you know, so many of us feel that isolation that right now, that I think that's a really important message. Yeah, I think it's been really hard for a lot of people. I know keeping my mom inside, you know, as she's, el she's elderly and trying to keep her safe, but then also her wanting to go places. She wants to travel again. It's like, mom, you don't have a passport, so we gotta take care of that. But, um, you know, it was really hard for a lot of people not to be out, but we're here still, which is the good news, right? Yeah. We made it through, hopefully. Um, <laughs> is there any other news that you wanna share with folks? Well, the, the audio book for Leap to Wholeness just came out recently, and uh, a lot of people like to listen to books that way. So if you're looking for a way to connect with my work, um, that's, that's not reading, it's directly, but um, I hope that it, it's moving to you and uh, the, the message of openness and connectedness is, is resonant. And where can they get that, any of the sources too? And My publisher is North Atlantic Books. Okay. So their website is, you know, it's available on all the web websites. It's also, the book is available in bookstores. Amazon and yeah. Yeah, but it's also available in bookstores and the audio is, is certainly available on all the all online. All platforms? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, any other thoughts for the audience, too? Is there one thing you want to leave everybody with? Well, I think that we are faced every day with chances to become either closed-minded or open-minded. And when we close down, you know, we, we, we get more certain about life. But when we open our minds, we're uncertain and we're more vulnerable. And yet that's the way that we weave our stories into a bigger whole. And that's what we can do right now. And there was one question I didn't ask, and I always ask everybody, is there anything green and sustainable you're doing? Well, uh, so I, I'm involved in a lot of political campaigns, making calls 
Uh, there's legislation in, in the U.S. government to invest in climate change right now. Right. Um, and so that's a big deal, and I'm really excited about that. I know. One year we want to be at the COP. Not this year, though. <laughs> Scotland would have been great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, thank you so much for coming on. And um, it was just an honor to interview you, and you do so much for the community. And everybody, thank you for what you do. My pleasure. And um, maybe we'll see you again. Um, I look forward to it. Maybe, Thanks, a, maybe a live thing at CSL one of these days, right? Yeah. When you're performing. Um, and people can find you on social media. Facebook, Instagram, all the usual suspects, and um, and thank you. Uh, thanks to the audience. Uh, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, we will have a Tags USA coming out soon, and USA Tags, um, pushing that forward. It was going to happen before the pandemic. It didn't happen, so that's okay. Everything in its time, right? Um, and make this a great Tags week by conserving, reusing, and rethinking the way you choose to live here in Silicon Valley and beyond. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, Heather. Thanks. Mm -hmm.